<laughs> What's good YouTube? Welcome to episode 12 of Survival Tutorial. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to create an automatic tunnel boring machine that will not only dig its own tunnel, but build the tunnel around it as it goes. It works kind of like the German inchworm tunnelers using simply a piston and some rotors along with drills and welders. This is very useful if you don't mind doing AFK building as it moves pretty slow. It's also useful if you want to go off and do other things while you've got your tunnel building. Just fire and forget style situation. But I do not recommend sitting there with it like I did for the time lapse here. If you've been getting value out of the videos make sure to remember to subscribe and hit that like button to let me know that you enjoy it. Also if you do subscribe go ahead and hit that bell notification so you'll be alerted when the new videos go live. If you've seen my Automating an Empire series, you've probably seen me create a crawler using pistons, conveyors, merge blocks, and wheels. It's a super complicated system and actually it will not work in vanilla mode without experimental because you absolutely positively need share inertial tensors for that. There is one version that will work and it will work in space as well especially in the absence of gravity. I think this will work better without gravity. If you are in gravity, I recommend you spin this one upside down and basically build the entire thing upside down from what we're doing. That way it's being pulled down by gravity, being pulled apart basically. That would help out a lot. But since we don't have gravity, we can use this system right here a lot easier than we can use the other one. So what this is, is uh, it's a series of advanced rotor heads spread apart by two blocks each time. So if you go by this two by two by two by two pattern here, you can go indefinitely and you can actually create a crawler that will just crawl right on through. Now through the use of projectors and such, you can create basically a perpetuated system that will just continuously build whatever you want it to. So we're going to use this to build what you just saw previously in the intro. So in order to do that, we actually have to create a little secondary machine here. We're going to have to create this little piston and rotor setup. So all I did was I attached two conveyors to the end of a piston with a battery and then two rotors here. What this is going to do is allow us to extend the piston and basically crawl our way forward. But in order to set this up, we absolutely need to fly it over to the base because there's no way that I know of that we can attach this. If you try to attach something like this, I'll show you what I'm talking about here. If you try to attach something like this to, let me get this right, all right, to that, it won't allow you to attach it. If you're trying to attach the head to something, it will not work. So what you have to do is you have to place these and then you have to attach them separately. If you look at the rotors, they have this ability. If you look at the rotors here, the advanced rotors, you're going to notice that they have the ability to add and, re add and detach the rotor heads. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this ability right here to basically make this part of the base and move it forward and forward and forward and forward. In order to do that, we have to line these rotors here up with these rotor heads and attach it through that menu. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to, since we're in creative mode here, I'm just going to spawn in a quick ship and move it on over there. So we're just going to use the water ship that we have for the other, or for the survival world here, since that's what we're going to be using to move it inside of survival as well. All right. So I've spawned one in and I've just added a little landing gear to the bottom here so we can attach to this other little thing that we've got going here. I guess we'll call that the crawler and we're just going to hop on in here and we're going to we're going to switch our view here and find our ship that we have here. Now this is a nice little way to move stuff around. If you have a welding ship and you've got to move something that's not too heavy, it, there's no problems with that whatsoever. It's actually pretty good for moving stuff around. Now I, I don't recommend I was messing around with this before in a testing thing that I was doing and I don't recommend actually having this thing moving when you try to pick it up because that is super hard to do. So just try to make sure that when you when you get all this you don't let any of it move and you want to line up as straight as you can here just to pick this up it just makes things a little bit easier okay now that we have locked in we're just going to move this thing over to this setup that we have here it is very hard to control pre-warning you'll have to definitely play around with it just be careful not to slam into anything i think this ship may be slightly small for this large amount of mass let me zoom out here so i can see a little bit better and maybe move to 
the side here. There we go. So what we need is we just need to line this up with two of these very, very carefully. Uh, you're going to have to pretty much run it with the same setup. And as long as you have these pistons lined up correctly. So notice I, if you look at the piston here, you see that it's got a zero. Uh, it's got 315. So basically it's got degrees written around it, right? So this zero point here is where this line right here should line up. In order to keep it from basically spinning out of control as you connect it, that is a very, very important thing that you have to do here. So as long as you line these up correctly all the way through, I recommend just picking a direction for your zero and just making sure that these lines run the same way all the way through your little grid here. Because if you don't do that, then it will definitely cause some clang issues. Because basically what's gonna happen is when you when you attach, it's gonna, if you wanna lock the rotors like like I'm going to in order to keep everything completely stationary and going in a straight line and not have to worry about it spinning at all. If you want to lock the rotors, you're going to have to do this because that's going to want to line up with that zero at all times because the way we're going to set it up in order to lock it correctly. So pay very close attention to that while you're setting this up. But as long as you do that, everything should work out pretty well here. So we're just going to hop in and we're going to line this back up. I actually have this spun around from the direction that I want it to go. So let me spin this back around. Okay, so we're just going to carefully line this up and try to get the piston heads basically inside of the rotor here and as long as you have that lined up correctly it doesn't really matter what the orientation is it should lock in and it'll lock in perfectly fine now I wanted to put the battery on the back because that's just it makes things easier for me the reason why I do that you can pretty much go in any direction you want here but I, I recommend putting all the weight in the back it just makes things a little bit better so and I want the piston to move forward not backwards just so I don't get confused with it, which means I'm going to have to spin these rotors around, I believe. Yeah, I am. I'm just going to spin the heads around. That's going to make things a little bit easier for me. Okay, so I've got the rotor heads spun back around in that direction. So as long as we line these up, basically to where these rotor heads look like they're inside of the rotors, which is really hard to do here, by the way, just pre-warning, you may have to fiddle with it quite a bit to get it working right if you're using this uh, welding ship. The welding ship's, uh, I think, a little small for this job here. So we're just going to undock the welding ship here and take off from this because we don't need to move that anymore. We don't want to have to force the welding ship. So we're just going to move down here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to tell this rotor right here to basically lock in on that head. So all we have to do is go in here and it's going to be the uh, rotor that's connected because we don't go through the piston yet. So we're going to go with this one and we're going to rename this rotor before we do it so we know which one this is this is gonna be front rotor okay so I named this one rotor back whatever you want to name this is perfectly acceptable um, it's just for your own benefit and I'm gonna go ahead and rename the other one too while I'm at it I recommend naming these to which to where you can tell which one they are because there's gonna be a major issue if you don't I'm just going to run in here and change this to rotor front now the reason why you name these is just so you know which one it is because you're gonna have to attach and detach these at specific times so now that that's done we're gonna come in come in here and we're just gonna attach this rotor front real or rotor back real quick so all we have to do is attack and as you notice everything moved now what happened is this rotor just locked in on this rotor head here and now that's attached to this section we can either attach this other rotor here after we lock everything down or we can move it forward now we're going to be moving it forward so i can show you exactly how to work this system but what we're going to do here first is we're going to go on and lock these rotors down just so we don't have to worry so i'm going to come through here and i'm going to find both of the rotors and i'm going to come down here and we want to set the the rotor lock to on and we're also going to want to set the rotor limit and the the rotor limit to zero on both rotors and yeah, both upper and lower limit need to both be zero there is a reason for this that that way they'll lock in at the same position each time and they won't be moving around with any clang that's happening from the piston or the drills that we're going to be using so now that we've got that set i'm going to set the other one and be right back with you all right so now that i have both of those set we're just going to come through the piston here and we're just going to reverse this piston just so i can show you what's going to happen here with the setup that we have we are able to basically just leap frog these rotors here this one should go all the way to this back one here and stop at this back one if i am correct we may have to set the rotor or the piston length a little bit i think it goes a little bit further oh actually that's perfect okay so now that we fully extended you notice it lines up with this one so if we lock this first one and we unlock this back one we can move the entire setup so this is actually really important for what we're doing 
This will allow us to just basically move forward, forward as much as we want or backwards if we have to. So in order to do this, we know that the rotor back's already connected. So we're just gonna make the rotor front connected now. Make sure that they're both locked at the same time. So we're gonna attach that one. And then we can come down here and find the rotor back and we can detach rotor back and then go to the piston and just reverse the piston and it moves the entire setup forward. And then we just basically lock this back in and keep moving forward. Now with all of this, we can actually set up timer blocks to set to basically do this for us and this is how we're going to move forward and basically drill our entire setup so we're just going to have this drill through the rock that we need to get through and then we're going to set up welders on the outside of it in order to automatically weld our blueprint that we're going to be creating so let me come in here and lock this down so we can continue to move forward in fact let me reset this and we're going to get these um timer set up real quick so I can show you exactly what's going on so I'm gonna reset it real quick all right so yeah I've added four timer blocks here I can probably do this with less timer blocks but this is just to be on the safe side we're gonna use the four timer blocks here just to make sure all of our tolerances are correct because this game can act kind of funny from time to time when it comes to timer blocks and their their timings and stuff like that so what we're gonna do is I've already got the timer blocks set up and tested so I know that this is gonna work for you uh, we're gonna come through here and we're gonna set timer block one to two seconds and we're going to set up actions on timer block one and the actions that you want to use are front rotor detach piston reverse and then timer block to start what this is going to do is it's going to detach the front rotor reverse the piston start it moving forward and then it's going to start the timer block two which is set up for 22 second delay and these delays are going to change when we get into create or when we get out of creative this is just to show you what's going on here uh to show you how it's going to work so don't worry about these delays yet unless you're building along with me in creative mode but set up actions here we're going to set up the actions for front rotor attach and timer block three start so this is going to reattach the front rotor and then it's going to start the timer uh timer block three here so timer block three is set up for two seconds just a little bit of leeway and what this is going to do so this is going to detach back rotor reverse the piston again and then start timer block four and timer block four is set up for a 22 second delay as well with rotor back attach and timer block start so basically it's just going to roll through the timer blocks all four timer blocks and it's going to repeat this entire thing so it's going to detach the front rotor reverse the piston start timer two then it's going to reattach the front rotor start timer three then it's going to detach the back rotor reverse the piston so it moves forward and start timer block four then it's going to reattach the back rotor wait a few seconds and then start the whole process over again so what that's going to do is allow this to just move forward indefinitely just as far as you possibly have this thing built here we're actually going to be setting up in survival to where we can build this automatically so basically just as far as we make our blueprint for so we'll get into that shortly but we just need to make sure that this is going to work first so let me go ahead and give a quick demonstration of how this little crawler is going to work so we're going to come through here and we're going to start timer block one we're just going to hit start on it and watch what it does so now that it's gone forward it will lock in on this block here reattach then it's gonna release in the back and move forward again then when it gets to this block here it'll reattach as well now it'll reattach after a few seconds and then move forward again so this one detached and move forward and it's just going to repeat the cycle over and over and over again just as long as we have a track for it to run on so i'm going to go ahead and just quick cheat in some stuff here since we are in creative mode i'm going to use my keyboard and mouse because it's a lot quicker for me to deal with so i'm just going to keep building this pattern and remember it does definitely matter which way that you have your rotor heads pointing we're just going to let this run through a little bit okay remember the line needs to point in the same direction at all times and we'll just let this move on through so as long as we have a track for it it'll be perfectly fine we're going to set this up to where it'll automatically build track so we can basically build as as big as we want to as far as we want to we're going to attach some drills here and we are going to basically build a tunnel along with it so i'm going to go ahead and stop this so let me find which one needs to be stopped there we go and stop 
So we're just gonna stop that for now and let it just stop where it's at and go over to our other little setup that I have here. I've got a pre-built section over there that I was messing around with off camera. So let me get to that spot. I'm just gonna bring up my admin tools here and we are going to teleport to it. So that would be... Okay, so we teleported to that spot. Now what we have going here is basically the same setup right here. I'm not too worried about this. We don't have the timer blocks on this or anything, but what we did is we created, basically we built the hallway that we wanted to build here in creative mode. And in fact, there are a couple things I need to add to this, I think. No, I think we're good on this. Okay, so we built in creative mode, we built the hallway specifically that we're looking for. We can get rid of this guy over here because we've got a better setup for him. And what we want to do here is now that this is fully built, we're going to go ahead and blueprint it just like we did in the last one. So in order to blueprint, we're just going to hit the right stick and hit the right trigger to go to blueprint. And we're going to create blueprint here. Now, first thing I want to do here is I actually want to attach something here so I can name this. I need to name this something like hallway. So I'm just going to quickly add a battery in here that I can access. Anything with a control panel is gonna work. So you remember how before we actually went into info and we changed the name there and we're gonna have to change the name here to something that we recognize. So I'm gonna go with hallway and hit okay. And we're gonna wanna make sure that this is set as a station as well. That way it'll be completely stationary. So you can go ahead and build whatever hallway you wanna build as long as it's straight and the, whatever size you want should be okay. I don't recommend going too big by the way because if you go too large then and you're gonna run into clang issues because you're gonna to have to build a drill setup that is large enough to drill out whatever you want. In fact, once I get this one done, I'll see about adding this to the workshop if I can. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this battery because we're not gonna need that in survival. This is gonna be directly attached to the base we currently have built. So now that we've got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the left stick and then we're gonna go from build here into blueprint actions. And then we're gonna create blueprint just like we did the last time and right bumper to confirm. Now that we have this, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna publish this one. Let me find it real quick, just so you guys can get a hold of it if you need. So I need to come down here and find hallway wherever I put it. In fact, let me delete all these that I'm not gonna be using anymore. Or can I? I'm not sure what the easy way to delete these would be, so I'm not gonna worry about that. Okay, so now we found hallway here, so let me go ahead and see if we can upload this to the workshop. Okay, this will be named hallway one on the workshop because for some reason it wouldn't let me upload the other way. And publish. We This is going to be a bit of a base, so we'll go on and do that. So if you wanna grab this from the workshop, feel free. Blueprint is published. I'm not sure, someone on Xbox, let me know if you're able to access my workshop stuff off of yours. I hope you can. If not, then we'll try to figure something out. If nothing else, I'll just have someone who has the Xbox version build it and share it as well. Okay, so I'm not gonna add anything extra in or anything like that for now. Now that that's done, Let's go back over to the other area over here that we have. I need to teleport back over real quick. Okay, and we're going to blueprint this as well. We don't need all of this mess here, so let's go ahead and get rid of it. Okay, that's all we need right there. So we're just going to blueprint this, and we're going to call this the... In fact, I need to get in here and rename it. And make sure that this is set as a ship as well. That's going to be a very important thing. We are going to name this the the crawler. Now this is the one that you're definitely, if you're following through and you wanna get something off the workshop, this is gonna be the one that you're probably gonna to wanna to get because the timer blocks are set up and everything. Otherwise you can set them up the same way. Now this isn't going to be the finished version of the crawler. I will update the timered version as well. This is gonna be the basic version. So in fact, let's rename this to crawler basic so you know that you'll have to change everything once you get it. All right, there we go. You'll have to set the timers and stuff yourself here. And then we're just gonna scroll out just a little bit. Okay, so let's get the screenshot set up here so we know which one it is. And we're just going to create blueprint here. Crawler basic, and I will upload this one to the workshop real quick for you. 
and it is published. So now that it's published, we can go ahead and hop back over into our survival game. Be right back with you. Now there are a few things we're gonna have to do before we can get this completely working. So we're gonna have to make room for the drill system that we wanna run here. We're gonna have to do a couple of other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done real quick and get back with you once I get it done and just tell you what I did real quick. So I'm just going to hop in the drilling machine here and I'm going to drill out the area. I don't really care about losing some of this uranium because we're going to have plenty of uranium by the time we drill through all of that. So I'm just basically going to right click drill around the area just to make sure we've got enough room to place our drills. Okay, I believe I've drilled out enough here. That should be good for placing drills because we're going to be placing the drills onto the crawler. So let me go ahead and put this guy back up. Okay, I believe I have the base pretty much ready to go here. I'm going to have to weld some stuff up once we get the blueprint or the blueprints and stuff placed. But what we're going to do here is we're going to create a projector here, which we're going to use the large projector, which is something we haven't used yet. And I'm going to show you how to use that easier. Uh, somebody gave me an idea with projectors for the last one to make it a little bit easier to use them And I'll show you how to use them a little bit easier. I really like this idea by the way Okay, so we're gonna place this projector here facing away So we're gonna have to worry about the way that we've got this facing So I'm just gonna line it up the way we said before with the plus on top and the lines facing outward from the base back here Because we're gonna be drilling it forward into the uh or into the asteroid here so we're just going to place this on the end here so we get good coverage and we're going to go ahead and get that working after we do something else and what we're going to do is this this time we're going to do it a little bit differently in order to control the projector better and get a better view on everything instead of using a seat this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna place a remote control and an antenna on the base. Now this will only be temporary. I warn you ahead of time, if you're having trouble with pirates, do not use this because they will see your antenna and they will attack. So let me go ahead and pick up what I need for this. Okay, so I got all of that built. It doesn't really matter where you place it or anything in the base. Uh, you'll be able to control it just the same. The remote doesn't, I don't think the direction of the remote matters as much either. But one thing you want to do if you're going to do it this way is you want to go into your actual menu So let's go back into the main menu here and we're going to come down to options and under game If you scroll down here, you'll see UI opacity and background opacity You're going to want to bring your UI background opacity down to where you can see through it because if you don't then it's not going to work to do it this way so we just went on and brought it on down okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to open our terminal so we're just going to hit the left bumper and the right bumper and we're going to hit the little menu button here on the left hand side and then we're going to come over into our control panel and we're going to go up to remote access here now that we're up in remote access you're going to notice that we have these two th or these things that are showing up on our grid as Controllable now the one thing that we have control over here is the Static grid 5909 that is the base. So once you find your base all you have to do is you Take control of it and you'll notice that you can now control By going into your menu You can go into your control panel and you have control of everything in the base. So what we're gonna do here Remotely have control so now that we can see everything which is why we made the background or not as opaque we're going to go down and we're going to find our projector. So that would be up here, which I recommend going through and hiding some of this mess that we don't need. I'll do that shortly, hopefully, if I remember. And we're going to come through here on the projector and we're going to load the blueprint for... We need that hallway that we just built. So let me find hallway. All right, we're going to load this into the projector. And apparently I need to go back into remote access here. For some reason it disconnected. Okay, so now that we've got that we're gonna go back into the projector and we're just basically gonna move this around until We get to a spot that we need to be Okay, so we need our horizontal offset set a little bit This is gonna be different for every projector that you do and every base that you do It's according to where your projector is according to how you set it up earlier So we're just basically going to move it around until we get it right. So I need to flip this upside down this can be a bit of a pain going through all of this, so I'm just going to go ahead and get it all set up and lined up the way I need it to be. 
All right, now, so I've got that lined up. I basically just lined everything up to where it's in line with what we've got here. I'm gonna have to add a little bit of work in right here to get it to line up like it needs to be, but that's not a problem. And we're gonna wanna repaint once we're done, but there's no big issue there. All we need to do is place some block. That won't be a problem. And now we've got it all cut out to where we know exactly what size everything's gonna be. We've got it all lined up and everything's good to go. And we've got the track placed here so we know exactly where to go from here. And we don't actually need all this back here. I think we should be able to attach right here. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna get all of this upgraded here and connected to the base. I'm gonna go ahead and all these lines in here, part of the base, I'm gonna go ahead and get these connected that way we've got a place to set up. In fact, I think I'm gonna have to move that projector as well. That's gonna suck. I'll get all that set up for you real quick. Okay, so we've got everything pretty much ready to go. I just need to come through here and one thing I need to do is I need to worry about what we're gonna do ahead of time. So I'm gonna go on into the large blocks here and I'm just gonna queue up a bunch of these conveyors and we're just gonna queue up, say about a hundred of them. I hope that's gonna be enough. In fact, Let's go ahead. Yeah, we're gonna queue up like 200 of them. So I'm gonna hold the right button and queue up two of them or the, the right bumper and then hit X. That way we, okay, two, 200 of them are queued up and we'll be making those while we're working. So now that we've got that done, let me go ahead and just get all of this upgraded. I think from here forward is what we need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and queue all of that up real quick okay so what i did is i just connected one of these conveyors here to the system we already had with this conveyor right here so that's gonna be a little bit different we're gonna get rid of all this later and i went ahead and did the first two rounds here that way we don't have to worry about creating them separately in fact i think i can get rid of this right here because we're gonna automatically build that when we're ready to go and if you run out here you'll see what i did i made sure that i, I just made sure that the hallway was at least long enough to go through the whole thing here which is what we needed to do and just make sure that you can make it all the way through the asteroid now it's your choice if you want to continue building or not after you make it through the asteroid i'm just going to go ahead and build all the way out here because this is going to be playing around i'm going to do a lot of uh, building and stuff in here outside of the tutorial just to make this look better and make it bigger and stuff so now that we've got all this set up Everything should be about ready to go. All we need to do now is we need to bring in the ship as well. So there's a couple ways we can do this. Uh, in fact, there's a smart way we can do this with what we've got set up here. Okay, I think the easy way to do this is going to be to go ahead and come through here. It's going to be to add another projector right here. We're just going to place this right here and get this built up. There's a reason for it. We're going to use this little 3D printer thing we got out here to print it up for us. Okay, so we're going to control it the same way we controlled it last time and now that we've got control of it i'm going to hop back into the control panel here and i'm going to find this new uh this new projector that we just placed so that should be projector three because it usually goes in order and we're going to come through here and we're going to do blueprints and we're going to find the other p piece that we made the crawler basic and we're going to load this into the blueprints now that we've got that loaded in we're going to come back through and do the same thing we did last time and just basically place this in a spot that's going to be in the way of this 3d printer thing that we've got set up here all right so basically what i did is i just lined it up here in the way so we're going to have to change up a little bit of stuff here but that's fine we can easily fix all of that it won't go past the piston unfortunately so we're going to have to add on everything past the piston but this is all the stuff that that matters anyway so we're perfectly all right with this but we're just going to line this up and get this ready to print and print this off real quick i just connected to the base using nothing but a two light armor blocks that way we've got something to start with on the print and we don't need to go all the way in we just need to come just close enough for it to touch so i think just one piston length is going to be perfect we'll find out in fact that should be close enough let's go ahead and stop it yeah that'll be perfect and now all we have to do is turn these on Providing we've got all the materials to make this, it'll go ahead and print off for us. So let's find out. Let's find our welders. I believe we made a group for that last time. Okay, so we're just going to toggle all of our welders on real quick. And that should have printed 
off the entire setup yes it did so we're gonna go ahead and move this and reverse it get it out of the way so we don't kill ourselves here and we're just gonna have to finish off the rest of this so if you remember it was actually pretty simple what we had going here so I'll go ahead and get all of that done for you and then walk you back through it just in case now the reason why this didn't all print off like it was supposed to was because basically what happened was if you remember pistons basically start a new grid at the end so it, it only do one grid at a time so we couldn't print past the piston there's probably a way around that but i'm not very sure what it is at the moment but i'll be right back okay so i just added the finished off the uh the piston Part, added a conveyor junction here and then another rotor here so we're gonna have to rename this rotor the same way that we did before as long as it's named the same it should work with the timer block and made sure that I lined the zero markup on the rotors as well that way it would be in the correct orientation so let's go through here and rename this rotor real quick that one was advanced rotor so let's find the advanced rotor way up here in fact I'm going to shut this stuff off real quick just so we don't have to keep going through it okay I'm so I'm name renaming this advanced rotor to rotor back I believe it was or no rotor front so that should be yeah that was what we needed to do so they'll be in the same area here rotor front rotor back good so now we're just gonna break this loose from the base and we are going to move this into position using the same setup that we did earlier we're just going to grab our little guy here and add a way for him to attach all right so I've got the, the landing gear attached here and we're gonna come down here and just pick this guy up and face him in the right direction so we don't get confused on where we are so that means I gotta face down like this okay so now that we're attached we can fly him or fly this new thing into here Got to be very, very careful here. I don't want to destroy anything. Okay, like I said before, you don't have to have it exactly perfect. This may be close enough to connect, so we're going to go ahead and try it. Yes, that connected. Now that that's connected, we can go ahead and detach the ship here. We didn't give ourselves much playing room. In fact, I think we're clanging at the moment. This might be kind of interesting when we get into this thing and detach. There we go. And we are detached. So I'm going to fly back up and dock the ship real quick. And then we're going to get everything else set up. Okay, now that we've gotten that done, it's time to go ahead and get set up for the rest of it. Now, what I want to do here is a little bit different than what I would have normally done. We're going to have to add an advanced rotor here. Okay, so we're going to need another advanced rotor here, but we're going to move this up. We're, we want this to be about midways. That way we can spin what we're going to do here. And I'm going to need to move it one forward from there. There's a reason for that. So I'm just going to start placing everything here. I need to figure out around where center's at. I think that's about center. That should be good enough. In fact, right there should be exactly center, if I remember correctly from the way I built. And then we are going to build our drills off of this. So that means I'm going to have to move this all back one because we are going to have our rotor. And then we can attach a drill here. And in fact, I don't think I did enough drilling to open this up, but that's fine. We can actually do this an easier way than normal so yeah that is going to not be enough so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make one line and run it all the way around at least once and get rid of this right here okay so what I've done here I, I've placed enough drills to basically clear out this whole area so once we rotate these drills one time through then that whole area will be opened up to where we can fit enough drills. We're going to place like a, a cross pattern, kind of like we did before at the very beginning of the series. And we're going to rotate that all around and we're going to mo move all that forward, which is why we're going to have to worry about our timings a little bit more. But once we get all of this drilled out, we should be a lot better off. So let's go ahead and upgrade all of this real quick. Okay, so I got all of that done. I'm going to go ahead and turn these drills on. And we're just going to drill our way out. In fact, before I start the drills and everything, I want to add a couple more guys down here. In fact, do I have an easy way to get down there? I don't think I do. I'm going to have to drill my way down there. I want to add a couple more of these large containers here because we are definitely going to need them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this stuff here and we're going to place a bunch, 
I think about maybe four to six more of these guys and get them all welded up real quick So I'll be right back. Okay. I added like five in here. That should be enough for now. So That's just because we're gonna be using a lot of storage space here once we start these drills up and I needed to make sure that I had enough storage space or else it'll slow the entire drilling process down quite a bit so now we're gonna come through here and just turn on all of these drills real quick and we're gonna find advanced rudder 3 here and we're going to set this to I'd say about 0.4 should be sufficient and just watch this drill on through and see how this is gonna work make sure that we're drilling enough through and we do need to widen this up a bit that won't be a problem once we get a full rotation done. We basically need to make sure that we drill out the entire area here that we need. Okay, so I've set the rotor to lock, pointing up this way. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of weirdness with the drills here. So let me go on and add some more drills. Not like anything we've done yet so far. Uh, let me get the what we need. And we're going to place these drills kind of weirdly here, just to make sure that we're drilling out enough area there. And we're going to basically have these drilling off to the side here. I'm not sure if that's going to quite be enough to cover everything, but it might be. So let's go find out real quick. Go on and get these upgraded. Okay, so now that we've got these running, I'm going to unlock the rotor and turn it back on real quick. And this will basically drill out a little section to the side. So hopefully we can get enough of the drills to cover the whole area that we need. In fact, we can even test it here just by placing these two right here. That should tell us if we're going to be far enough out. I think think we are actually all right so we've gotten all of that ready to go this is exactly the right size i believe for what we need so now all we need to do is add the same number on the other side of of this okay i believe i've pretty much got it ready to go here now all i've got to do is give a quick double check what i've done is i've done all the drills Basically, I've put, I've made a cross out of the drills and I have upgraded with welders basically around the inside perimeter here. If you do it on the inside perimeter, it, you'll get a lot less clang here. That's why I've got it set up the way I do here. And there's going to be one or two spots over here that's probably going to give me a little bit of trouble in the beginning, but that's not a big deal. Unfortunately, I couldn't place the welders right in this area here, so I'm going to have to do that all by hand. But let me cut all the rest of these welders on real quick, and then we will slow down the piston and start moving it forward and just give it a quick test run. Okay, I'm going to start the piston off at 0 0.01 just to make sure that it's running nice and slow the first round and we're going to go through this by hand to start with so we're going to go undo the front rotor and then we are going to take the piston here and reverse it so now we start moving forward we're just going to make sure that it cuts through the entire first round all the way up to the front and i'm going to give it a quick run to see how long it takes so Okay, so I've run through the first test run and it took 6 minutes and 33 seconds to complete the extension. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to come in here. Yes, this does take a while, by the way, just so you know. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to set my timer blocks accordingly. So each one of these 22 second ones should be set for 6 minutes and 33 seconds, which would be 393 seconds. And we're going to basically just choose both of these to be that. And looks like about the fastest we're going to be able to move forward is going to be 0 0.03 meters per second. It gets a little bit shaky if we go any faster than that. And that's one of the main reasons why it takes so long. That and it's got to basically drill through everything all on the way there. So as soon as this one finishes up, I can actually speed this up if I want to. Let me go ahead and speed this up and we can get this to where we need it to be. As long as we remember it's 0 0.03. And once this gets fully there, okay. Now we are going to basically lock everything back down and then I'm going to start the timer. And I'm going to let it run through in between episodes. And by the next episode, we should have all of this built. Glad you enjoyed the video. How about hitting the like button to let me know that you did. Also, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be alerted when new videos come out. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, click one of the two videos on 
on your screen now. Thank you. Have a nice day.